Hello, this is Greg Gals from Ring Rigs coming to you on the 21st of February 22. Time on deck is 15, 2900 hours Central Standard Time. My friends, Vladimir Putin just made a huge announcement uh, recognizing the Nest and Lansk as free independent publics, republics. And that's quite interesting. And it is creating a lot of consternation right now. This is really kicking the bee's nest in the world politics. Now, personally, I've always been for self-determination of nations and groups and peoples. And I've said that Donetsk and uh, Luhansk, the Donbass region of Ukraine should have the right of self-determination if indeed that is what is happening. Now, that said, uh, a lot of people are alleging that this is actually done under a different pretext that, uh, that, that Russia is gonna use this as an excuse to ratchet up tensions and eventually attack Ukraine. Time will tell, and we'll find out real soon. But I'm going to go more into this in a minute. So hang on to your hats, and I'm going to show you some articles and other things. In the meantime, bear in mind, I bring you this as part of my eyes wide open and head on a civil series so that you can be prepared, prepared to know what's coming at us so that you can get prepared. Now, whatever side of the political spectrum you fall down on this issue, I'm going to say this. It's going to impact you because gas prices are going to increase. Fuel prices are going to increase, and it's already in the cards because Putin just made an announcement that he is not going to be uh, shipping out uh, the nitrogen-based products that are used to make fertilizers from his country, which is one of the world's major supplier of these products. Like we use natural gas in the United States to make our fertilizers. Uh, well, so does Europe. And so a whole lot of the world's food supply is at risk. We know already that the prices of these things have tripled that uh, the cost of, ag uh, you know, that's been 25% of the cost of agricultural product, as I understand it, uh, when it hits the store shelf. Uh, my friends, it's going to go up. That's going to go up dramatically. It's going to cause the, the cost of farms to go up. Fuel prices are going up. Which, uh, guys, oil is part of everything. It's part of all of our price in our economy. It's still all based in spite of all the other hoopla about other energy forms. Oil goes into everything. Energy goes into everything. And fertilizer is what is made out of, in this case, mostly natural gas, but we use a lot of fuel to run these tractors and everything else that we're doing on the farms. So you can expect food prices to skyrocket. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that too. You got to pay attention to a uh, Canadian prepper. He's just come out talking about how uh, the Red Cross in, the United in Canada and the Red Cross in the United States are putting out huge demands for long-term food storage and they're hitting up even small vendors like him to buy it. The bigger places like True Leaf Market is getting hit supposedly too. But they still, fortunately, have supply, but the word on the street is, and that he's getting is that the prices of that stuff is about to get fearfully high. That all food prices are going up extremely, but this stuff is going to be extremely beyond reach high, apparently, according to uh, Canadian Prepper. Check him out. Don't take my word for it. Go listen to him and judge for yourself. Go listen to Canadian Prepper on this stuff. This is the latest video, I believe, is still up on his channel. Check him out. Check it out for yourself. Don't take don't take anything anybody says at face value. Many people listen to many YouTube videos and take you know hear a lot of stuff taken on face value. Uh, do your homework, research things, dig into it. I'm here to tell you guys, like I said, I'm bringing this to you as part of your understanding why you need to prep because this is going to impact us. No matter how you what you think is right or wrong, this will impact us and the reactions of other countries and back and forth are going to ratchet this thing up most likely. It doesn't appear that this is going to end simply from what I'm seeing. That's what I'm gonna share with you guys. That's what I'm gonna share with you in just a moment. So again, if you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe, bang the uh, notification bell and click all because I'll bring you more of this stuff. And I also got the videos on gardening and which have more stuff like that should be produced this spring. I'll be doing more worm videos and hopefully more wild edible videos. And these kind of things that you'll learn from for, to, to how to grow your own food and how to eat free from the weeds and trees. Both are very important. Uh, but in the meantime, given what Canadian Prepper was saying, you better get it while the getting's good and the getting being good might not be here long in our hood. So right now, if you go to prepwithgreg.com, right now, if you go to prepwithgreg.com, you can still get right now $50 off a, a four-week supply of food that lasts 25 years, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, 22,000 calories a day, better than the competitor, which will make you a winner. It'll keep the hunger away. Guys, this is, this is real stuff real food, and it's freeze-dried to make it lightweight, easy to store, easy to transport, uh, easy to bug out with. Uh, these buckets can be buried in caches. You can open them up. You can take these pouches out, and guess what? This stuff 
can be carried in your backpack real easy. That is four servings, my friend. And that's a whole lot easier on the back than a big heavy can. She's only got two servings jabbing you in the back. All right, guys. So take that at the heart. Those buckets have other uses. And once you go to prepwithgrade.com, also you get $150 off a three month supply. Excellent deals. And you go into uh, uh, my pay, uh, prepwithgrade.com, hit the logo on the top of my patient supply. It takes you into the widest selection available on the market anywhere of long term food storage. It also takes you to other prepping supplies, which you may need very soon with everything coming down. I'm going to be coming out with a video, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Uh, just been on events. I was actually was thinking to do it this evening. And I got another video on detail. I'll do something. Okay. Uh, this video is going to be on Canadian truckers. But uh, this breaking news, I decided to cover this. So I got many things to come up with, guys. So just bear in, uh, bear in mind and stay tuned here, guys. Like I said, subscribe, bang the notification bell, and click all. And watch my channel just in case you're not getting notifications. Just keep an eye on what I'm putting out. Yeah, I've been slow a few days. I got a lot of stuff going on. It's been hard for me to put out videos and work. Okay, let's get into it, guys. Let's go straight into it here. Let's look at what we got to see here. Um, I'm going to do a share screen. And we're going to go over here. And, you know, it's kind of funny. I put out a video just last night, which for some reason didn't get many views. But just last night, I talked about this letter, this article written by Vladimir Putin. When I was saying, what does Putin really, really want? I put this uh, article out there telling you what he says he wants. I mean, he's told us what he wants in a sense, in a sense, you, at least you know where he's coming from. Just didn't tell you what, how, what he's going to do, but it gives you a, a sense of the man. And guess what? He came out today after I pushed this thing out and did a video, basically reiterating everything in that paper. So what, how timely can that be? How timely is my uh, putting that letter out compared to what he just put out with his video? But for but for more, uh, uh, he actually in his video today said that he was considering or basically said that he would uh, recognize Donbass and Donetsk as independent republics. And sure enough, right following that, he did just that. He made the move to recognize Ukraine's rebel regions, as it's referred to here, uh, as independent republics. And I personally don't have a lot of beef with that although i got uh friends that do and some that don't so i got people on both sides of that but like i said i do believe that people have the right to self-determination if that is indeed what is in play here and some people are questioning that so we shall see but the world has reacted very fast mr bad hair day boris <laughs> from, from uh boris johnson you know, russian name right boris boris johnson from uh united kingdom prime minister of the united kingdom uh has came out and said that Putin has broken international law. And he out, there's also a lot of discussion how they have broke the uh, Minsk agreements, the Minsk treaty that was reached to uh, uh, basically try to calm down the situation, the warfare that was going on in regards to these breakaway regions of Donbass, which is collectively uh, Donetsk and Luhansk. So uh, let's see what he says here. Boris Johnson says, I gather. Just as I came into the press conference that Vladimir Putin has effectively announced that Russia has recognized the Breakaway Republic of Donetsk and Luhansk, uh, this plan is a breach of international law. It's a flagrant violation of the sovereignty and integrity of Ukraine, says Johnson. I am quoting him. This is not me talking. It is a repudiation of the Minsk process and the Minsk agreements, and I think it is a very ill omen and a very dark sign. Hmm. So uh, we will not allow, now this is big, how is it he's not going to allow, we, and who's we? A lot of interesting things, who's we, and how is he not allowed? We will not allow Russia's violation of this international commitments to go unpunished. Okay, and what punishments are you going to be able to extract on Russia that, uh, that you're not going to get back on you, and what punishments will you have that they even care about? Come on, your, your, your little uh, sanctions like Joe Biden's throwing out there. Russia's going to laugh at that stuff. <laughs> it's becoming clear that we're going to need to start applying so as much pressure as we possibly can to see how hard the situation to, uh, wait, whoa, to possibly, because it's hard to see how this uh, situation improves. Hmm. Okay. Okay there, Mr. Boris. 
Russian name UK prime minister. <laughs> All right, so let's see what else we got here. Because that's not the end, because Biden has also a Biden. He has made his own little pronunciations and he is saying that we're going to do sanctions. Uh, he says he's going to come out with an order, an executive order that will provide authority to impose sanctions on any person determined to operate in those areas of Ukraine. Talking about Donbass areas, Lansk and Donetsk. Really? Uh, how major is U.S investments in an area that's in the middle of a war zone, essentially. I don't think that's going to be a very huge amount of anything, and probably Russia's standing by to offer a lot more than what that might have been. So I, I, I failed to see the significance of this big threat <laughs> of sanction. I mean, come on, Mr. Weakland, wake up. You you, you, you know, I'll just go back to sleep. Nobody's listening to you anyway. I don't think, certainly, uh, Certainly, Vladimir Putin is not listening to you. You've not said anything that anyone will listen to. Um, so he says, furthermore, I deem it necessary to make a decision that should have been made long ago. Oh, this is the Russian leader. Okay. He was declaring them independent. Okay, never mind. I got skipped ahead here. Uh, yeah, Vice President Kamala Harris and uh, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin you know, chiming in. So all these people are chiming in to, uh, this is what it looks like, guys. Crimea has been previously annexed by Russia. Crimea voted to be Russian. Some people don't want to recognize that, including some of my friends. Uh, well, others do. <clears throat> but Russia has some presence over here in Moldova, as you may have noticed. Uh, these are the breakaway republics here. Donetsk and Hansk, part of all collectively known as Donbass. Now, it's possible. Uh, see, Crimea, one of their big complaints is they're not getting water. They're, they, they ask Ukraine for water, and Ukraine's cut them off. And they're having problems with water supplies here. You know, surrounded by water, but I guess it's a bit salty or something. Anyway, uh, it's possible that uh, <clears throat> Russia might make a thrust in to try to consolidate this territory, maybe some of this other territory. But these three Oblast, which is the, the sub governance unit in Ukraine and also in Russia, their sub governance units are called Oblast. It's like, you know, the cross between states and counties in the United States. So <clears throat> these Oblast, uh, these are the Oblast that are primarily Russian speaking. And if you don't believe that, you can check them out. I've heard some others say, well, in some place where they got, you know, 1% Russian blood, blah, 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 blah. Really? No, it is primarily. I'm in a couple of things here just so I can preserve memory. And we're going to go in here. Hang on, guys. We're going to look at Ukraine. Give me a second in uh, Wikipedia. I'm going to show you the case where the language is spoken, at least. Uh, a second. Sorry, I can only open so many pages at a time. My memory in this old computer really, really, really drowns out. Let's see, I gotta go down here to find what I'm looking for. Bear with me just a second. Here's your the various different oblasts in uh, Ukraine. You can go here to Wikipedia and check all this stuff out for yourself. Again, don't thank my work for anything. Do your own research. But now in Europe, they use a comma instead of a decimal point. So here you can see that uh, Crimea, 77% Russian speaking. This is a percentage of Russian speakers. This is Donetsk, and it's 74.9, 68.8. These are majority Russian. This one isn't quite majority, but it's almost equal. So you know, I can see Russia maybe wanting to take some of this. Okay, and to connect, they might take a piece of this, even though it's definitely not a majority Russian speaking. And there is, you know, fairly heavy Russian influences around here, as you can see. Uh, so what would Russia go for? Would they try to take everything east of the Dnieper River? Will they take Ukraine to force Ukraine into uh, compromise? Will they surround Ukraine? Some people think they will, or will they not? Well, Russia not rolling at all. Some people say they will not, but most think there's going to be some action here. 
some action jet act. Oh, my cursor's hanging up. Um, something else that a lot of you are not aware of. Russia had a, something called an orange revolution. An orange revolution was a revolution where a, a elected uh, uh, president of Ukraine uh, was deposed. And he was deposed by, uh, uh, well, well, there was an election that some people think was tampered with. According to the Supreme Court of Ukraine later, the, the election was tampered. But according to the people there, it wasn't. So it was uh, Victor, um, shoot, there's both these guys, Lashenko is the guy who lost, who was, apparently was poisoned. So here we go. Victor Lashenko uh, apparently got poisoned during this campaign. Now we know it's uh, Russia has been poisoning a lot of uh, a distance. A lot of people who they're against politically, they poison them. You know, the, the, uh, this has been happening. This is a Russian modus operandi. The person who declared winner was uh, Victor, another Victor, uh, Yanukovych. Yanukovych and Lashenko. Yanukovych was declared the winner. And uh, like I said, the Supreme Court later, of course, later after the other guys took power, said that this had been rigged election. So the fact that they declared declared it later, who knows? Uh, that is a process that may be true or maybe not true. And of course, we know uh, some people uh, have this feeling about our current uh, sitting POTUS, if you know what I mean. Victor Lashenko, though, uh, yeah, he was poisoned. So there was a coup known as the Orange Revolution. And uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Lankosevich was uh, replaced. And uh, due to that, uh, you know, and this was largely backed by the CIA and, and Russia claimed foul and claimed meddling. And they've said the process has been uh, invalid in Ukraine ever since. Well, I don't know guys, I'm not gonna weigh into this. I'm just letting you know what some of the background here was and how things got to where they're at. But apparently right now, the majority of Ukrainians don't want Russia. And that's a fact, uh, except now that uh, the, those oblasts that we talked about in the Donbass region, Donetsk and Hansk, uh, they have been wanting to break away. They were actually wanting to break away from Ukraine prior to the formation of the Soviet Union. And when the Soviet Union was forming, they had declared themselves to be independent republics and Lenin put, uh, made them stay. Oh, here we are, Lenosk and Donetsk. Lenin made them stay in Ukraine. And it was none other than, um, uh, oh shoot, what's his name? I want to pound his shoe on the podium. <laughs> uh, I get brain lock. I was going to play him in a play once. And I can't suddenly I can't remember his play. Yeah, actually, I was going to play the, <laughs> uh, oh well, I'll think of it in a little bit. Russian, uh, Shoot, he was there and over the beginning of the Russian space program, too. Um, yeah, I'm getting brain locked. Excuse me, guys. Happens to me sometimes. Uh, anyway, in the 50s, Crimea was given to uh, Ukraine. Basically, because, you know, hey, we're all one big happy family here in uh, the Soviet Union, right? Except the Soviet Union broke up. Uh, and uh, as I've said previously in my video last night, you know, Vladimir Putin said that was the worst tragedy, geopolitical tragedy of the 20th century. Trump and World War I, World War II, nukes, uh, Holocaust, and all kind of other huge tragedies. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of what uh, uh, Vladimir Putin's all about and what he's calling his card some now. So uh, let me uh, end this video. Uh, not video, I'm at that uh, website. And we're going to go in here. I got to move this down. So Biden has made his response. He said he's going to sanction. And then again, so Biden's talking about his sanctions, man, you know, cutting uh, the dollar off from Russia. And Russia's been trying to get off the dollar anyway. <clears throat> There's talks of, you know, how well, well, we'll just stop the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Well, uh, Russia says, hey, if we've got Ukraine. We've already got that pipeline. It's now under our control. We don't need the Nord Stream 2. Who suffers? Uh, well, Germany suffers, and East, uh, and a lot of our uh, European countries in the middle of Europe, who are so dependent on Russian oil and gas to keep their homes and, and run their vehicles and factories uh, for their agricultural needs, they're going to suffer tremendously because their supplier is Russia, and they need Russia and Russian gases. This is why Germany is a bit lukewarm on all this stuff. 
France is trying to cut peace deals, uh, but they are also committing troops to Baltic states along with especially United Kingdom. United Kingdom is sending a lot of troops to the Baltic states. And the Baltic states are Latvia, Lithia, Lithuania, and uh, Estonia. I'm gonna say lithium, <laughs> it's the Lithuania. Okay, so um, that's the case of where we're at, guys. This is what we're facing. Uh, Russia don't care anything. Let me, end, let me end that stuff. Hang on, stop sharing. Hey, oh, Russia don't care anything about the saints that we're talking about throwing out there. They think they're funny, they're humorous because they have the upper hand controlling the energy supplies to Europe. They got the upper hand. Um, but on the other hand, Russia's not getting what it wanted. It wanted to push NATO away. And the NATO forces are, are, are massing in those Baltic states. And the NATO forces are massing in Poland. And uh, Russia's not happy with that. So in a sense, they're losing a piece of what they were asking for. Now, you might recall, I had a video with uh, David Pine saying, you know, maybe we give up the Baltic states and pull out of Poland uh, or pull back our forces um, and to, to stop, you know, Russia from invade is agreement for Russia not to invade Ukraine. Well, NATO wouldn't go along with that by any shape or form or fashion. And I didn't think we would, uh, but, you know, uh, we didn't, we don't have any actual, we don't have any vested interest in Ukraine, except for, you know, some of our political types of being on the board of directors of energy companies in Ukraine, uh, you know, Mr. Hunter. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's not a national vested interest in the United States. Uh, although uh, a couple of our leaders might think otherwise, but that is truly not a nas national vested interest. So uh, there's human interest. You know, the, the Ukrainians don't deserve to be run over. And neither the people of Donetsk and uh, Luhansk. People of Donetsk and Luhansk deserve independence if they so desire. They, they, I believe in the right of self-determination. If they honestly show they got an election and that's what they want and they uh, they have a due, duly elected uh, process and determine they want to be independent, then uh, that's what it ought to be. And they've been angling for that from, you know, over a century now, actually a century that those regions have been aiming to be an independent region. And they may want to join Russia. That's possible because they are essentially Russian. Now, Russia is not a petition to make them immediately part of Russia, but it may be effectively that because their tanks are liable to roll in right now to protect those so-called new states. Whether you accept them as new states or not, their tanks are probably going to be rolling in there. And to some, that is the invasion. Some will say, oh, they've invaded. The invasion has occurred. Well, Ukraine respond on that basis alone. Uh, there has been shelling going both ways to, to try to incite each side to basically start a war. Like the shelling don't start a war. Uh, the war hadn't already started in a sense. No, the war started in what, 2014, really. Uh, it's just been in a, a stalemate with a Minsk agreement, uh, a, a ready stalemate that's been punctuated quite a few times by things that were violations of the ceasefire, including 60, I believe it was yesterday, 60 viol separate violations on a single day. And some of these viol violations have included small arms fire and some has included artillery. And by small arms, I also refer to the things that pull many shots with one trigger pull, uh, which are you know, called fully automatic, which our Democrat uh, leadership doesn't understand what a fully automatic system versus a uh, semi-automatic or even single shot as far as I know. But anyway, so, you know, uh, here's what we're looking at, guys. We are looking at this escalate because uh, the West is going to push back and England is really putting their foot in it and Russia has been putting their foot back in England. They, the Russia and England have already had some tit for tat going on with Russian forces going around England and some other things. They've already been at it to a good degree. So it's possible that England might make moves that would cause them to be attacked. If England gets attacked, that invokes Article 5 of the NATO Treaty and we're at war. That's all it takes. And here's another thing you gotta be aware of. If Russia rolls in 
and they may. Russia has now it in their doctrine to use tactical nukes if they think they're losing a battle, a fight, or a military objective. It's in their doctrine to use tactical nukes. Tactical nukes could invite response in kind of other tactical nukes. That can escalate. That's where you can go to a full-scale nuclear war, among other things. Of course, Russia might just decide to keep us out of their business, and, and the, the EMP is just part of the electronic warfare in their, in their philosophy. That's not a nuclear war that we just, uh, even though we've taken out your entire power grid and you'll die in the, over the course of the next year, that's not a nuclear war, not a direct attack. We didn't hurt anybody, not immediately, despite the fact that nine out of 10 people might die in the course of a year. So I'm saying, guys, there's all kind of slippery slopes that can lead us into bad days here. And what side do you support or don't support? Things are happening. Things are happening, they're happening right now and it can get ugly very fast. That's where we're at. That's almost immaterial who you support and don't support now. <laughs> because the, I think this, this uh, roller coaster has left the top of the hill and it's about to start rolling down. And whatever course it's on, that's where it's going. And the Lord knows, we don't know this course. The crystal ball is not as translucent as this one. <laughs> and that's only translucent because I got a light behind it. <laughs> uh, blue bottle, Santa bottle there, okay? So, yeah, uh, think about this, guys. You better be prepping. That's the bottom line of this message. You better be prepping. Prep now, like you, especially if you're in Europe. If you're one of my listeners in Europe, think about what I just said about the fact that Russia is going to hold, be holding back uh, nitrogen. You think about the fuel. Think about where, what's part of your bread basket. What was the bread basket of Europe? Ukraine. Uh, you know, think about the supply chains already shut down. And for anybody in the world, if a big part of the world's uh, a food supply shuts down, it's a global market. We're all going to be paying for an increased food. Oh, yeah, by the way, look at China. It's been discovered that China's got over 50% of the grain reserves in the world. They've been buying grain from everybody. They weren't using it a minute. They have been stacking it up. They've been storing it. Why? China is the world's biggest prepper. Why is China prepping like that? What do they know? What are they preparing for? What do they got up their sleeves? Is Taiwan coming next? Is that going to happen when the, the sea state dies down over in the Strait of Taiwan around March or April? While we're still huffing and puffing over the stuff going on in Europe? I don't know. It's possible. They claim they want to make a move in there. If they're really serious and want to do it, we might see that happen, especially if we're amply distracted elsewhere. Maybe. In any event, guys, Look at the world today. Look at the situation with Russia. Look at the situation with China, each rapidly developing their nuclear forces. We had a Cold War once upon a time with one nation. We came so close to nuclear war so many times, it's unbelievable. We came close to accidental wars. We came close to uh, wars in which uh, the only reason we didn't have a nuclear war was that the torpedo officer would not fire the torpedo. He was com commanded to fire a nuclear torpedo commanded to fire and he refused to do it because he didn't want to be the starter of the nuclear war. Wow, he refused to order. He suffered the rest of his life for doing that. That's the kind of things that we're dealing with, guys. We have came so close to nuclear war already. And that, that was just between the United States and Russia. Now we got the United States, Russia, China, North Korea, and, and maybe even Iran to lesser degrees. Uh, the world is getting a little too interesting. I got a video coming out, be nuclear survival. You need to watch it when I come out with it. You need to watch it. It's coming out real soon. So that, I'm going to say, hold on your hats. It's about to blow. Uh, something's going to go down. I don't know what. Let's hope it ain't that much. Let's, you know, I, my hope is that this announcement, Putin will declare victory, and we'll just kind of stand by to make sure these regions don't get invaded legitimately and not use it as a pretext to start another war. He'll declare victory conserve his forces, conserve his money, and go home. That's what I hope. Uh, but the rest of the world may not be able to stand for that. I'm expecting there's a really good chance of something out. Well, yeah, I had an article where it happened to that. It said there's, I saw an article claiming that the royalty of England wants a war to distract from all the things going on in their family. Hmm. 
Uh, there was been an article to that effect floating around. I thought, well, should have brought that out. <laughs> search for it. You can find that kind of stuff out there. Go search for it yourself. Whatever. I don't know if that's the case. You know, there's a lot we don't know here. But what we do know is uh, the cast is already set that the prices of food are going to go up considerably. The availability of food is going to go down, especially if you are in Europe. In America, yeah, we're going to be paying too. We're already paying through the nose. Think about what's happening with supply chains. Just think how much worse the supply chain issue is going to get. And then there's the whole thing where uh, a lot of people are tired of what we had to deal with. My governments were pushing for freedom, and the only tool we got is put pressure on the supply chain. I mean, you know, hey, it's what it is. So, you know, that's just nothing that's going to create some shortages. So get ready for it. As far as the truckers go in Canada, hey, unfortunately, they got disbanded in Ottawa. <clears throat> but the people up there, oh, there's still a lot of protest. There's a lot of pro freedom people in Canada, so don't give up on Canada. But, you know, we want to see something going on here. It's just guys, the whole world is coming and glued inside and outside. Prep, prep, prep now. Prep like your life depends on it because good chance it does. Well, that I'm going to say. Thank you for watching. And I hope the greater creator protects us all. And with that, I'm going to say thank you and great.